this, I'm Leo Ryan from the Guitar Maniac. Today I'm gonna try out the Emuzin strings. And this time it's personal. Back in those days when I was just a kid who was just learning how to play guitar, I lived in Central Asia and I used those strings a lot because those were the only ones available on the market there. And the last time I used them was 2002. After I moved to Germany, I started to use a different brand because you can't find Emozin strings in Germany and I wasn't this uh, brand addicted. And now it's 15 years later and I was glad to know that this brand still exists and I had a kind of uh, nostalgic feeling so I decided to order those strings and try them out. Of course nostalgia isn't the only reason why I ordered these strings. I have a chance uh, finally to compare these strings to a different brands. For example, the Elixir, the brand that I've been using for at least the last five years. And here is a little background story. Emozin is a Russian company that was making strings over the last 20 years. But if you make a Google search for Emozin, you'll find a link to their official homepage, the homepage of their official shop, and that's all. There are as good as no commercials, a couple of pointless low quality videos made with old cell phones, and a bunch of links to a guitar forums. The average opinion on these forums is avoid these strings at any cost. Well, it's a kind of weird thing because I have never had any bad experience with those strings, but then again, back in those days, my guitar wasn't the best one. I had just uh, the cheapest practice amplifier that I could get, and the most important thing, my playing skills weren't as advanced as today's. And so, today I'm gonna try out uh, the Amazon strings on my custom-made plug and strat. I've ordered the four basic models of the Amazon strings. Those are steel strings, nickel strings, the electric shock strings. The official homepage claims that they have the most powerful response with a magnetic pickup. And the Gold Star Masters. Those are like budget models for the students. The electric shock, steel and nickel strings have description of their sound on the back. And the Gold Star Masters have an instruction how to put the strings on your guitar. As far as I know, the Elixir strings are the steel strings. That's why I will go with steel strings for this test. And as always, I'll make a blind test. the second example. So, can you hear the difference? And seriously, I would like you to leave the comment below. What do you think, which of those two samples belongs to the Elixir strings and which one are the Emozin strings? I will reveal the results at the end of the video and in the meantime I would like to talk about one nice feature of the Emozin strings. The Emozin factory offers you an option of ordering the custom strings. That means if you have some non-standard ideas for your instrument, you need specific strings that aren't there on the market because they're not standard, you can ask the guys from the factory and they will make a special set specially for you with all your specifications. As for me, I'm pretty happy with the strings that are there on the market. However, I tried this option as well. I have here a fretless bass. Well, I'm not a fretless player and I'm still struggling with the intonation. And I haven't changed the strings for a while here. 
I use the flat ones with a fretless instrument. So the problem was Emozin have a standard four string set. And so I asked them if they can make this to the five string set and they did it. Well, it's kind of cute how they tried to make a custom label for a custom set with a gauge of the fifth string in handwriting and a piece of paper glued to the back. For the rest of the sets they just include the package of the fifth strings and that's what I basically wanted. I actually ordered the five sets of the base strings and they shipped me six. Besides, I've got a package with the Emozin picks and a 10% off for the whole purchase. Well, thank you guys, I really appreciate this. The base strings are covered in machine oil and I guess they use it as a lubricant while production. I decided to wipe it out using the toilet paper and electric contact cleaner. And so let's hear how the strings sound. There are two things that I actually like about these strings. First of all, if you open the package, you can see the date inside when these strings were made. For example, these guitar strings were made in January 2017 and the bass strings were made in the May of 2017. I think that this is kind of nice idea. And the second thing, those strings are actually incredibly cheap. I paid less than 3 euro for a guitar strings and less then 17 euro for a set of a five string bass uh, strings. And even if you count uh, the 20 euro of shipping costs from Russia to Germany and 19% uh, of uh, standard custom fees, well, this is still cheaper than average uh, package in Germany. And if you want the bass strings, that's totally worth it to buy this. Well, I can't see any flaws with these strings. So what's up with all these uh, not quite positive reviews? I have a couple of theories there. First of all, a lot of people talk about the experience uh, with Emozin strings from the 90s. And maybe when this company was uh, starting out there were a lot of production flaws, but nowadays I can't see any of those. The second thing, those strings are actually super cheap. And a lot of people assume that cheap means bad and expensive means good. But this isn't always the case. For example, the material and labor costs in Russia are much lower than the in the USA and that's why the Russian strings are cheaper than the US ones. And another thing, I couldn't find any single commercial of the Emozin strings and I guess that the company cuts the cost on their commercials. Well, in the long run for the business this might not be a good thing, but for your customers I can't actually complain because I can buy the cheap strings. The third thing that I've mentioned before is a lack of advertising. A lot of people trust the huge brand names like Ernie Ball, Dodario, Jim Dunlop or Dean Markley. A lot of professional musicians play these strings and what's good for professional is good for everyone else. And let's just imagine that some huge guitar player like Joe Bonamassa starts playing uh, Emozin strings. A lot of people will buy them because Joe Bonamassa plays them. Otherwise, People just don't trust uh, the strings that no professional musician plays. Well, Emozin have a couple of endorsers, but those are just some Russian local bands and nobody knows them. And that's why people just don't buy something that they don't trust. And the fourth thing is a sort of retailer's fault. Emozin strings are super cheap and that's why they are mostly sold in the regions with a poor economy. People there cannot afford expensive strings anyway and that's why retailers don't want to deal with those strings in these regions. And in the regions where people can afford expensive strings, they buy 
the huge brand names because they trust those and they don't buy emotion strings. And so you have the regions where people use all sorts of brands uh, name of the strings and there are regions where people use emotion strings. And a lot of comments are basically from the people from the poor regions. They are mostly pissed off because they can afford different brands. And they naturally assume that different brands will be better. But actually, most of those people have never compared uh, Amazon to a different brand of the strings. Well, but those are only four of my theories. And so, in conclusion, what can I say about Amazon strings? Well, they sound good, they feel nice, but I would still prefer the Elixir strings, because those are coated and they have longer lifetime. I prefer to spend my time playing the guitar rather than changing the strings, especially when it's guitar with Floyd Rose. But if Amazon finds a way to call those strings, well, then maybe I'll have my new favorite. But actually, those strings uh, might be interesting for the people who think that coating the strings kind of kills their sound, and with 3 euro for a package you can't go wrong. This company might be interesting as well for the smaller bands who want to make their first endorsement deal. I'll put the link in the description below, you might check this out as well. And of course, the retailers might be interested in Amazon strings as well. And so, what about the flat wounds? Well, I have never seen a good quality uh, base flat wounds uh, with 17 euro for a package of the 5 string. And I think that Amazon should make the 5 string flat wounds uh, for a base kind of standard and not uh, the custom order. And maybe I'll start using those strings as well, even if I have to deal with all those uh, shipments from Russia to Germany. And this was quite an experience. There are a lot of companies in Russia which are making strings, microphones and music equipment and I'm looking forward to test those products because a lot of those are high quality and they are actually a half price of the similar products which you can find in Germany. And some of those are actually innovative. But there are a couple of disturbing things in the management of the Russian companies. And this is sort of message to all those companies how you can improve your management. First of all, we live in the time when international trade is easier than ever because of internet. And this is kind of disturbing to see that a lot of Russian companies have the homepage with description of their products only in Russian. Well, maybe this is a kind of smart idea to add a couple of uh, language options for the international customers. Well, at least uh, make an option of English. As for the Amazon, they actually have a homepage with pretty weird graphical design, but at least it's informative and they do have the English version of their homepage. Second thing are the payment options. Russia has its own banking system, which isn't compatible to a German's banking system. I just couldn't transfer money from the banking account in Germany to a banking account in Russia. However, there are a couple of international options like credit card or PayPal, which I prefer in this case. And both of those options are actually supported by a Russian banking system. However, the Amazon factory doesn't have a PayPal account. And so it was quite an experience to transfer money from Germany to Russia. And thanks to a couple of my subscribers from Moscow, I transferred the money uh, with the PayPal to my subscribers and they transferred uh, money from their banking account to the banking account of the Amazon company. And so, for international orders, maybe this is kind of good idea to get one of those international options. Because I don't think I want to go through this whole experience uh, to order these strings of, from Russia. And another thing is advertising the products. Seriously guys, we have internet, we have YouTube and we have social media and making a commercial isn't such a big deal anymore. Just grab a half decent camera, they are not expensive nowadays and important thing is a half decent uh, sound recording device because without good sound your video still sucks. And if you think the Amazon company exists over 
20 years and this is maybe the first half decent uh, video about amusing strings and just do some kind of uh, video commercial and post on social media it's not this uh, big issue and so that's all for today have a nice day and keep on rocking And here are the results of the blind test. In the first example... The sample A was recorded on the Elixir strings and the sample B was recorded on the Emusine strings. And in the second example... samples were recorded with the Emusine strings. Well, the second example was just a little psychological thing. A lot of people assume that they hear the difference because they see the difference. I offered you two options of sample A and sample B and maybe some of you assume that one is better than another and guess this was all played with the same set of strings. And so that was my question. Do you really hear the difference or do you assume that you hear the difference?